for Che, which were we were hiking around, hiking around in the jungle, I was able to put everything in backpacks. And I could almost put uh, all the lenses, put a couple batteries, a couple, a few cards in a backpack, and I have the camera, and I, we're, I'm ready to shoot for a full day instead of, you know, chasing with a, with a big 35 millimeter camera. And in fact, uh, I know Steven originally wanted to shoot Che in 65, and I could never see us doing, I mean, not never see us, but it would have been a whole nother task to bring 65 millimeter cameras. And I don't know if we would have got the same shots that we would have just because of the size of the camera. The red camera itself is about nine pounds. And we probably added another, you know, 10 pounds. So I'd say ours would be 20, maybe compared to 35, 30 to 35 for a handheld camera, film camera, or another digital camera. I think for Steven, he's, he likes to shoot from the hip <laughs> and he could literally shoot from the hip with his camera and hold it in his hand. And I think that's one aspect. And I know the other aspect also is uh, having control on the other end in the post side and being able to edit and being able to color time and being able to do all these things without having to send it to a lab. So one of the biggest differences as far as production is that you, you don't need to tether the camera to a huge set of drives. Um, so obviously from a DP's perspective or director's perspective, it allows you to basically treat the camera as you would treat you know, a, a small handheld video camera. Drives were not available at our time of shooting, so we could only use uh, eight gig, gigabyte cards, compact flash cards. We had about 237 for the shoot. Um, we had to make sure that, that there was enough to go, we were in very remote locations in Spain and we had to make sure that there was enough time to go back to Madrid, make a copy on an LTO machine and get back to us. So we figured out 237 um, would work. It also wasn't as simple as simply buying more cards because we actually at that time had um, run out of vendors who had the compact flashcards that we could use in the cameras. Um, you know, we sort of scoured the world's supply of 16 gigabyte um, or eight gigabyte compact flashcards that could operate at the speed needed for the camera. After we finished the card, the card we would give it to our loader, uh, um, Virginia, and she would uh, she would make two backups on set um, on hard drives, and then it would be sent to the editor. We'd load those onto the SAN transcode them, sync them, and the goal was that to, by the next day, um, when Steven would wrap the following day's shooting, he would have sunk dailies to edit that day. You know, when we were shooting part one in Puerto Rico, we had some long drives to and from the set, and um, I would be cutting on a laptop in the car footage that we had shot the previous day. So, you know, I so if it's, we'd shoot on a Monday, Tuesday morning and the drive out to the set, I would be editing Monday morning's footage. It was just, I figure it's, you know, a 70 minute drive, you know, I can be working. And so the ability to have like a flash drive hooked into my, you know, Apple laptop and I have some headphones on, I'm just cutting in the car. That was a great, you know, that saved us. It just saved me a lot of time, you know. It just, even if I felt like, oh, even if I just take a rough, take a rough pass at one or two scenes, that's one or two scenes. It was definitely a, a full 24 hour day, you know, for, for, for a couple of weeks. It was, it was basically, uh, you'd, we, we'd have call time at like six, seven o'clock in the morning. And then, so you'd be there during the whole day and, We'd, we'd wrap maybe at about six or seven at night, come back, have some dinner, and then pretty much get back to work on on, on stuff like getting new features in, getting things fixed, you know, uh, improving things. At one point, uh, when we were going through the, the, the most troubleshooting, I think we had something like 800 emails go back and forth in, in just like half a day. <laughs> just everyone communicating constantly back and forth between everyone, you know, just trying to get get everything working as fast as possible. I was hoping to have more communication. 
pretty much all I had at the time was my small BlackBerry, and uh, there was no cell phone access or anything. But there was, there happened to be one small, tiny patch of, of two feet by two feet where I could, I could send a text message. And so half the day I would be standing in this patch, kind of sending updates and asking questions and getting, you know, technical stuff back and forth and all. And I was just standing in this one patch with the phone kind of facing a certain direction and I would be able to communicate.